Hello, everyone. Um, let's start. I hope it's fine. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, so there's, um, anyway, let's start. Uh, thanks for joining today. Um, my name is uh, Dionysis Tsumas. I'm director of DevOps at uh, GWI. And in the next 15 minutes, I will talk to you about a topic I'm very passionate about. It's about um, engineering ownership and how you can give this kind of ownership to your um, infrastructure uh, as, as code. B before we dive deep into what, what, what we're doing, um, let me um, tell you how we're doing stuff in WI. So we're using Spotify's Guild theme, and we have a DevOps team who is dedicated to create new toolkits, uh, to support and mentor the rest of the engineering teams. But each team has a DevOps champion, an engineer who knows uh, Terraform and cloud. So each engineering team is responsible for their own infrastructure. Okay, uh, They have ownership over it. Um, and we don't want people to use Terraform locally, so we don't want them to be able to create stuff uh, with Terraform plan and Terraform apply from their own computers. So we have centralized this, and we use Atlantis for this. If you've never heard about Atlantis, it's fine. It's just a service that lives in your cluster and just listens to uh, PRs from GitHub that uh, touch Terraform code. It clones locally the repository, does a Terraform plan for you, and then pastes back um, the results as, as a comment. Okay, it's, it's a centralized place to run Terraform code because we don't want engineers to do this stuff locally on their own computers. But this is not, uh, not to talk about you know, Terraform or Atlantis per se, it's about ownership. And we strive for engineering ownership. In fact, ownership is the best thing you can give to a team in order to unlock it. And for me, for, a, for an engineering team that is you know, unique, you need to give them permissions to do whatever they like so they can reduce or they can have faster iterations. However, you need to have certain processes in place. You don't want people to accidentally you know, delete your infrastructure or you don't want to abuse it at the other side as well. Uh, so while we strive for engineering ownership, we wanted a while ago to start moving from acting um, uh, reactively to acting proactively. Okay, it's, it's ve this is very important. And if you are wondering how we're doing this, the answer is through Terraform policies. So now it's a, it's a good place to introduce um, OPA. OPA is an open source uh, generic purpose engine that allows policy enforcement across your stack. It uses a uh, rego. It's, um, it's a high level uh, declarative language that allows you to, to decouple policy uh, enforcement from your code. It's, it's language agnostic. It doesn't need Terraform. It doesn't need infrastructure as code, or it's not dedicated to DevOps. It just needs something uh, JSON-like. So you can use it um, in your cluster, in your CI/CD, in your Kubernetes, or your API gateway. You, you can do a ton of stuff with it. Um, and of course, it's, um, it has been adopted to CNCF. This is, a, this is an image um, that it's easier to, to imagine how OPA looks like. So you have your service. Um, actually, what is service? You, it can be a microservice. In our case, it's Atlantis. And um, Atlantis runs Terraform plan. It creates a JSON plan for you. And then it feeds OPA. OPA is, is, is an engine. And then it has several policies. It takes your code. It runs certain policies, like certain checks on it, and then it returns a response. A response could be, yes, this is good. You can uh, proceed based on, based on your policies, or it can say, you know what, this is not OK. Or it can be something more complicated. Um, still, it's, this, is a, this is a bit generic. OK, so for, for our example, we'll have a look in a very valid case for GWI. So I've said that we have centralized our Terraform plans that applies, which makes perfect sense. But at the same time, we don't want people to do it locally. So what we have done is we took away permissions to the Terraform state. They just don't have access. It's fine. But if someone wants to, he can give himself access. Uh, and then through Atlantis, everything is going to be OK. 
and then your know, DevOps will find out six months down the road. So we need to find a way to add the policy so people under no circumstance can give themselves Terraform access to the buckets. And this is how our policy looks like. Um, this is in Rego. I, it does not make much sense to understand what it does. Uh, Rego is not the easiest of languages out there. It's declarative though, so it's easy to read it and understand what it does. A quick through would be, you know, Terraform plan gives a JSON to this policy. We iterate through the resources and then we check. Is it a bucket? Does it start with TF state? Does it include um, something that we, we don't want? We don't want to create new stuff or we don't want to edit new stuff. If yes, fail. And that's all it does. All right. So we solve our issue in less than 40 lines of code. And um, again, it does not matter what it does, but by having this thing applied in your Atlantis configuration, running this as a policy, out of the box, you, you, you solve all the security issues that say what's going to happen if an engineer gets access to your state. What's even better is that OPA allows tests. And you know, where engineers were supposed to write tests, but you would be surprised to find out how many DevOps tools do not have testing out of the box. OPA does, and, and it's, it's very nice. In this particular case, we just test the policy we've just seen, and then you just give it mock data, and then you add it in your uh, CI, CD pipeline, so you, you make sure you don't break this in the direct iteration. And this is an example of how you, we run it locally. Um, 34 tests, well, it's not, it's not, it's not that, that bad, it's good. Um, if you're wondering how this looks like on your PR, it's like this. Again, you have an engineer, the engineer creates a PR, and then Atlantis picks up the PR, runs Terraform apply, runs the policies, and then it posts the results back to GitHub as a comment. This is a comment that, you know, eight tests run, everything is okay, you can proceed and apply. So after a, a nice code review, engineers can go and say Atlantis apply, and then Atlantis will, is going to be responsible for running Terraform apply for you. And this is how it looks like when um, OPA is not happy. So in this particular case, you know, it fails. We have a resource. It does not match certain labels. And um, then it does not allow you to proceed. By failing, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you, you're blocked. It means that you need to bring someone from an external team. It can be a DevOps team. It can be your uh, lead engineer just to give and approve, just to run, you know, Atlantis. Approve policy for me, that's fine. We'll fix it in the next PR. All right, so we, we've seen how it looks like. Um, some of the use cases now that we use it in, in GWI. Actually, OPA is language agnostic. It does not matter. You just need to fit it JSON stuff, and then it produces some results, All right? So sky is the limit. However, we use it for some very nice cases. Uh, we've seen the TF state. Uh, we use it to enforce labels. We want all of our resources to have certain labels, like environment, community, so then we can be, um, create uh, billing dashboards out of them. We have created some policies that don't allow engineers to delete stuff that we don't want them to. You know, obviously sometimes you want to delete databases, but you don't want your engineers accidentally delete your production cluster or your production project and stuff like that. Um, and lately we start playing with Helm stuff as well. We've seen people abusing, uh, for example, ingresses. They create a ton of new ingresses that they cost, and this is a very nice way with only a few lines of code and forcing people to use your own ingresses. Okay, so it's always about policies. However, there is a last option in there. Um, you know, what we've said now, until now, it's, it's, it's nice. You know, it's something that it, it unblocks engineers. They have ownership on their own infrastructure. You just, you know, add some processes. Um, in there, but could we find a service that will completely unlock their potential? Um, so now it's time to introduce InfraCost. InfraCost is not the only alternative, there are other stuff there as well. We use InfraCost because it has a very nice open source offering. InfraCost is just a wrapper above your um, cloud billing APIs. So again, it's, it, it stays to your cluster in the license to PRs takes stuff from Terraform and then queries your provider to say how much it's going to cost. All right. And then it posts back the results um, 
as a comment. This is an example of how it looks like. In this particular example, you know, it's just a test project. It costs it zero money, and then after we create um, a, a small database, InfraCos says, you know what, it's going to cost $16. And, and it's fine. What we have done with this small iteration is we given engineers ownership over their cost management as well. Because, okay, to be fair, people could do it either way. They could, you know, go back and do their own research, ask people, you know, create tickets about it, discuss it, get approvals, and then create. But you will be amazed to find out how many times this happens, especially when there is a crisis, especially, you know, when a service needs to go tomorrow in production or where there is an issue and you need to scale up your cluster. People, they don't know how much stuff will cost, and they only find out by the end of the next billing month, when it's already too late. Okay. Now, InfraCost, out of the box, it gives them a very good visibility. This change will cost that much, that much amount of money, All right. which is very, very powerful, only by integrating with InfraCost. Okay. Uh, but we're talking about OPA. Wouldn't it be very nice to be able to combine these things two together, having InfraCost and then create a policy around it? Because cost management is great, but you also want to give your engineers ability not to overabuse your infrastructure. Actually, it's very easy. In these like 10 lines of code, because InfraCost exposes all the information as JSON, OPA takes this JSON and then you just check uh, an attribute uh, if it's more than, a, more than a limit. So in this, in this very, very quick example, we say, we have a policy that will fail if your infrastructure difference will be more than $200. And this is how it will look like. So in our case, we have a test project. We create a, you know, a small database. InfraCost gets back the results. It says it's going to cost $16. But we have a policy that says don't allow anything more than $10. Um, it's, it's way too expensive. So it fails now. By failing again, it means that people need to get approval for this. All right. So it's not the end of the world. People need to get approval. So wrapping things up, what we've done. It's not only you know, Atlantis, OPA, Rego, InfraCost, things that we have introduced and we have talked about. It's about ownership. If you take away all these fancy names and SaaS services and uh, offerings and you know, clusters, what it remains is the ownership over your code. And you will be amazed to find out what engineers can do, how much faster they can iterate if you give them true ownership towards what they're building. We've done this in GWI and it have worked miracle for us. Thank you. We will be outside for, uh, for questions if you need. Yeah, thanks.